Yo, what's up everyone? Decided to do a little bitty uh, live stream here because um, there's news, man. There's, there's actually uh, news that's gonna really affect us fishermen out here, especially when we target flounder. Uh, plus, I just wanna see who's really working or not. Is, is anyone working? Hey, what's up, Kenny? Welcome. Uh, so yeah, I've been, getting, uh, I've been getting emails and people have been telling me, um, well, first of all, hey, can you guys hear me? Kenny, can you hear me? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, perfect, perfect. What's up, Lewis? What's up? What's up, Giselle? Rowell? Welcome, guys. Red? Alex? Kenny? Saltwater, Texas? What's up, Don? Fishing Fanatic? What's going on, man? Great, great. Does anyone work these days? <laughs> I have to work in the evening shift, so uh, I have time to do a little bit of live stream. But the um, reason why I wanted to do a live stream is because I've been hearing rumors, man. I've been hearing rumors and... Uh, also got an email today from uh, CCA, uh, the Star Tournament. If you guys have not signed up for the Star Tournament, go and sign up. It's like 35 bucks and you're into the tournament, plus you're helping conserve uh, the Texas waters and you get a chance to win a boat. I signed up. But anyways, um, yeah, so there's, there's, there's rumor and uh, rumors have some truth to it that there's gonna be some flounder regulations um, that's gonna really affect uh, us flounder fishermen, especially me, you guys know that I love flounder fishing, and I I rather catch flounder than redfish. Uh, I don't know a lot of you guys may disagree, but I feel like flounder fishing is a is much harder uh, than redfish fishing. Uh, a lot of you guys might, might disagree with that. I don't know, but um, but anyways, uh, there's some regulations. Email said that I got from CCA is that they're thinking about changing the size limit from 14 inch to 15 inch. Um, so that's that's significant man because you know honestly here on the texas coast uh flout, we don't get the large big flukes that you see on the east and west coast in california um getting a 14 15 inch flounder um it's, it's not an easy thing to do right you we catch a lot of dink flounders there are a lot of small little flounders here especially in the marsh system i catch a bunch of dinks um but um yeah what do you guys think from 14 inches to 15 inches and another kicker is uh, once this regulation does come into effect, there's going to be no flounder fishing during the whole flounder run. So from what is it, November 1st through December or something? Um, that's crazy. I mean, that's when all the big mamas come closer in shore. And that's when the big flounders really, really come out. You know, I honestly, I don't, I honestly see the point. I do see the point that them shutting down um, the flounder season from November 1st through, um, what is it, guys, correct me if I'm wrong, is it November 1st through something, right? I know some of you guys have gotten an email too and know about this potential law change. Uh, let me know. Um, Alex, <laughs> whatever, dude. <laughs> All right, guys, so no one knows. Okay, let me just, hold on. Let me, see, I'm editing right now. Let me bring up my uh, email here. Just give me a sec, all right, guys? And I'll give you the truth, okay? Hold up. All right. Where the heck are you? Dang it, where is it? All right, here we go. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I didn't. I guess I deleted the email. Sorry, that was a waste of time. My bad. Hold on. Let me get to. Um, let me get to the screen here. Uh, Graphic design has changed. It's fun. All right. Um, Okay, sorry, yeah. Fishing Texas USA, November 1st through December 15th. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh, because, you know, honestly, um, like I said, that's, that's when we catch the big ones. Uh, majority of the big ones are caught during that time. And it would be insane if Texas did change that rule. I mean, that would affect, that would affect a lot of businesses, too. Like, for example, Seawolf Park. 
Uh, Siwa Park is a very highly pressured, well-known public park that, I mean, I guess you keep, uh, that, that you pay to fish and a lot, just because of the location, if you guys know Galveston, where Siwa Park is located, um, it attracts a lot of flounder uh, inshore. And a lot of these guys that go weight fishing or fish that general area, they, they catch some big ones, man. Um, I mean, 18 inch pluses uh, up in that area. I, I try to avoid that area. I don't really like fishing uh, highly pressured areas like Seawolf Park. So um, that's crazy. If they shut that down, Seawolf Park would lose a lot of money. And you know, Seawolf Park charges an arm and leg to just to get out. How much, how much is it to fish Seawolf Park? What, what do you guys, what, anyone know? I think it's like 20 bucks total with parking. I mean, that's insane. And then you got to pay again at 6 a.m. or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, all right, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I like it. I like to... I like the rule from 14 to 15 inches. I think that's fair. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that's fair from 14 to 15 inches? I think I think that's, that's fine. Um keep uh, going a little bit larger. Uh, you know, honestly, I would even argue um, trout from 15 inch up to 16 inch, I think would be appropriate. Um, <laughs> $9 to get in, $6 a part. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of money, man. Um, but anyways, I, I, I think that's appropriate, um, but just I just don't really agree on closing down the flounder season, the official flounder season. Uh, from November 1st to December 15th, because anyways, from November 1st to December 15th with the current laws, uh, the bag limit is two, is that right? Bag limit is two, prior, before then, it's five. Um, if anything, if anything, I think changing the bag limit all year round to two would actually be more beneficial than closing down from November, 5th, November 1st through December 14th. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree, disagree? Um, and, move, and bumping up the 14-inch regulation to 15 for year-round, I think, would be appropriate. What, what do you guys think? I want to hear y'all's opinion. Get rid of gigging. Oh, man, you know, gosh, I, I, I can't really say much about gigging because I, I've honestly I only done it once and I, I got skunked. This was, this was like 15 years back, but... Um, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I think gigging, uh, gigging does, a lot of those guys that do gig, they do grab a lot of flounder. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to speak for the gigging industry because, you know, that's a business in its own too. Um, but, um, yeah, so a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys agree. Okay. Change the limit to three. I think, I think that's appropriate from five to three. Uh, and keep that year round, right? I mean, I think I think that'll be appropriate and move from 14 to 15 inch. Um, heck, if they still want to regulate the November 1st um, flounder season, I think uh, maybe moving the limit of the size from 15 to 17. Uh, what do you guys think? You guys think that's fair and keeping at two? Um, but I think closing it down, I think that's I think that's unfair. All right, guys. Sorry. Let me just kept. Uh, let me just catch up with all these comments here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, a lot of you guys agree. Um, moving up to fifteen uh, would be good, which I agree to. Um, let's see here. Louisiana has no size limit. Wow. See, I think that's wrong. I think I think there should be size limit because. In my humble opinion, I, I don't see as many flounders as I see redfish and trout. Flounder reproduced November, during November. Uh, yeah, that's what I hear too. Uh, three is going to, you want three as a limit. Um, I, okay, that, that, I'm okay with that. 15 inch with a limit of three. Okay, a lot of you guys agree with that. Some of you guys want down to two, which I think is appropriate. I think honestly two two flounders uh, year round is, is it's fair. I think it's it's 100% fair. Limit gigging. Uh, the gigging gigging guides wreck the flounder every year. 
Yeah, uh, that's what I hear, man, because when you're gigging, um, it's easier to, uh, okay, I can't say it's easier, but I, I feel like your chances of limiting out on flounder is much better than um, uh, fishing rod and reel. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I have no problem with that. I should do a Christmas Bay fishing video, Alex Luviano. I, I have many fishing, uh, fishing days at Christmas Bay, and there's a few of my videos out there. Um, I think a recent one is when I caught some flounder and a redfish. So uh, check it out; it's there. Is it lim Is it easier to limit on gigging? I honestly, I think, I, I like I said, I can't really say much because I'm not into gigging. I really don't do it, but I would assume um, gigging would give you a better chance of limiting out versus, you know, uh, rod and reel. So I don't know. I, I, what do you guys, do you, anyone gig uh, know that is it easier to limit out on redfish when you gig? Okay. Uncle Fester Adams, I saw one study that suggested redfish limits resulting in increased red population were driving down flounder populations due to competition for food. You know, that that can be fair. I mean, uh, the more competition with the predatory fish that hunt the same stuff like shrimp, crustaceans, mullet, um, any small little bait fish, minnow, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. Uh, if you have more of a predatory fish, it's going to prevent the other line of predatory fish to really reproduce and grow. Uh, food is vital for reproduction. Food is vital, obviously, to survive. And um, yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, as a former, okay, Robert in Texas, as a former commercial shrimper, I think the biggest decline is caused by uh, shrimp nets. Man, that's, that's, that's a good point. Um, who knows what their shrimpers are pulling up when they are dragging that those big old nets across the floor in, in our waters? I mean, that's 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 a valid that's a valid point. You know, I, I don't know much. I can't really say much because I'm not a shrimper. I don't. I'm not in the business. Um, but I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. Aaron Higgs says, be glad you can still harvest them in Tampa. We can't take speckled trout, snook, or redfish. God, that has to suck. <laughs> okay, J4M2B. How about establishing more habitat for flounder? In Louisiana, they added reef, uh, reef balls to Lake Poncheritan. I'm, I think I butchered that. To help fish. I, I think that's, that's another great point. Um, Building more reefs, um, more, I guess, uh, synthetic reefs uh, for these fish to thrive in, to grow, uh, because, you know, fish find, you know, their food and safety and structure. Um, I think I think that's a good, great idea. But yeah, I think a lot of you guys agree with me, right? That moving from a 14 inch minimum to a 15 inch is appropriate. Um, I think a lot of you agree with me that limiting the bag limit from five to perhaps two or maybe even three year round is appropriate. Um, but I still haven't, you, you guys still haven't answered my question. Do you guys feel it's appropriate to close down the flounder season from November 1st through December. Is that appropriate? Let me know, let, let me hear it. Let me hear in the comments, what, what do you guys think? Oh, okay, so a lot of you guys, well, not a lot, but a couple of you guys have relatives that 
were in the shrimping business or you were in a shrimping business and you say from firsthand experience uh, that you do catch a lot of flounder, small ones. Okay, Robert in Texas, it catches millions of baby flounder just inches long in the shrimp nets and by the time they cull, they are dead and become seagull food. But that's, that's a good point, man. That's, that's something I would never think about. That's crazy. So, <laughs> these, uh, these guys that run the business, um, you know, pulling in live shrimp for us guys to buy at bait shops like at Boyd's or uh, Bayou City bait shops so we can um, fish the bank or fish off the boat. Um, it seems like it's, um, you know, it seems like it does a little bit of damage according to you guys. But like I said, I can't really say because I don't have any experience uh, with shrimping, um, but that's, 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 that's something to think about. Okay, Mark Ship says, it's inappropriate to close season, change bag limits, and legal size. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I agree. I, I totally think, I totally think closing down the, the season, the official flounder season from November 1st through whatever, December 14th, 15th, I think that's inappropriate. Um, it, I think there'll be more control I think there'll be more control and less damage to the flounder population if we change the bag limit from, like I said, 14 to 15 inches uh, or of size, size limit, and we change the bag limit from five to two or three. Some of you guys are mentioning three. I think that would help a lot, um, but I, I don't think, man, I, I think closing down the flounder season is inappropriate. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kaden Vasquez says, I think they should close November and not the beginning of December. Um, why? Why, 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 do you, why do you say that? I want to hear the reasonings of why you say that. Coach C says, who really needs a bag of five flounder? I mean, it's cool and all for pigs, but who really needs to eat five? So two or three would definitely help in my opinion. You know, I, I agree with you. Uh, I have a family of five, three kids, a wife, and we absolutely love flounder. Uh, when I catch a flounder, majority of the time I would keep it if it's the legal size. Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't keep more than two. Um, I've, there have been many times I've, I've hit my bag limit of five, um, and I just I let, I let them go. I, I don't keep them um, just because... You know, I don't, I don't see the need. I keep fish when I need to keep fish. Uh, majority of the time, I'm, uh, I'm catch and release, as you guys see in my videos. Uh, and if I do catch a fish, it's only going to be like one. I don't see the point of, you know, keeping many fish. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys disagree with me, too. Um, the laws are there. Um, and if it's legal to catch five, you know, I can't say anything. That's, that's the law. And if you catch five and you're within the law... You know, more power to you. But in my opinion, in my in my humble opinion, I, I don't think, you know, with the size of my family, especially five five people, including me, I, I don't think it's necessary to keep more than two. Yeah, Adam says, keeping a couple of anything now is fine, but catch photo release is the only way to sustain the fishery. I, I agree. I agree. Um, like I said, for, with me personally, I keep what I need. Um, there have been many, 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 many times I've caught more than I need, and I just release them. There's, there's no point for me keeping uh, more than I need. Except it's a redfish that goes on a cooking show. <laughs> uh, okay, Caden says, because they are done breeding by the end of November, so why have a December shutdown? Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I should educate myself about the reproduction cycle of the flounder. 
Uh, I just I just know from November 1st to December when the flounder season starts in full swing in Texas. Uh, that's when they spawn and that's when they reproduce and all that stuff. Uh, that's why they're more inshore. Um, you know, but I don't I don't know the exact dates or the time period of incubation or anything like that. I mean, that's something I need to educate myself on. Um, but I mean, that that makes sense too. Um, so closing down November and keeping December open, well, maybe. Ron Smith says, closing down flounder season during their run puts all the burden on people that fish from shore or wade. Yeah, that, I 100% I agree with you. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's it sucks if they do close down the November 1st through December 15th flounder run, that, that would hurt a lot of people. I hurt a lot of businesses, bait shops, um, like SeaWolf Park, they gotta make it, they gotta make their living. Um, tackle companies, um, anyone that specializes in flounder. Um, yeah, that, that would definitely hurt. I, I disagree. I 100% disagree with, disagree with that, uh, you know, potential regulation. Um, once again, the things that I do agree upon is I think we should increase the 14 inch to 15 inch uh, for you guys that are coming in late. I, I think flounder from 14 to 15 inch is fair in the state of Texas. I think limiting our bag limit from five to two, possibly three, I think that's 100% fair. And um, by closing down the November 1st through December 15th, I, I think I think that's wrong. But uh, yeah, that's enough of me rambling. Um, the reason why I wanted to live stream this is because, you know, I have, I'm very emotional about flounder, man. I, I love my flatfish. Uh, as I stated many, many times, it's it's my favorite fish to, you know, catch inshore. Uh, I love it catching more. I love fishing for flounder more than speckled trout, more than redfish. Um, but but let me let me kind of back up. Um, Fishing for tailing reds, that's a lot of fun too. I, I, you know, when you see a school of tailing reds, that's that's adrenaline rush and that's a lot of fun too. So I, I would put flounder fishing almost up to, you know, schools of tailing red. But in general, just blind casting and trying to fish for redfish, I find it more, I find it more challenging to uh, do the same for flounder. I don't know about you guys, but, uh, but yeah. Um, that's 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 pretty much it. Uh, so let's let's chit chat, guys. What, what do y'all want to talk about? Have you guys seen my new Old Town or my new video uh, with me talking about my Old Town? Have you guys saw the video yet? Uh, when will I go back to the jetty? Um, you know, with this virus thing, I, I just don't. I'm not too comfortable. Um, because I've seen the effects of this virus and what it could do to people because, you know, I work in a hospital where we're a hero hospital that I work with that I work at and we get the sickest of the sick. So I see uh, the what this virus can do to the body and it, it's not it's not fun, man. It's not cool. So I'm, you know, I'm I, I just don't I'm just not comfortable um, with large gatherings um, of people. Um Especially at the jetties. I mean, right now is a freaking awesome time to fish for speckled trout off the jetty. Last year, this time, using the slip cork, um, fishing like tw 10 feet down, I've caught a lot of, I think, I caught my PB trout, speckled trout, from the jetty using that method. Right now is the time, man. They're, they're, they're running up all up and down the surf and the jetties, um, feeding themselves. It's, a, it's an awesome time to fish, but I just don't, I'm just not comfortable um, you know, fishing in large gatherings like the jetties, because when you start catching fish, just just the nature of the jetty um, mentality is when you catch fish, all these other fishermen will start coming closer to you. They'll start fishing, you know, next to you. You know, it's just <laughs> that's just that's just jetty culture, man. I mean, what can you say? All around the world, it happens. Um, so it's. It's it's tough. <laughs> so until until this until this coronavirus kind of chills out, you know, I think I think I'm going to probably not go to those crowded places like the Freeport jetties. 
Um, that's why you see me fishing from the kayak more often. Uh, just, just trying to stay away from the crowds, man. Just stay away from the crowds. All right, okay, so uh, what else y'all wanna talk about? So a lot of you guys have seen my video with the kayak yesterday. I appreciate everyone that's commented. Um, if you haven't seen the video, make sure you go over there and watch the video, leave a comment. Um, I'm not gonna get into details of why, just, just check it out. Um, what else, man? Give me some fishing reports. Have anyone been catching fish lately? Hit them with your rod until they're not six feet apart. <laughs> That's crazy. But here's another thing that you guys don't know or may have not thought about is there's a lot of wind on the jetty um, because it's out pretty much open water. And the way the coronavirus spreads is through droplets. So if you have someone that potentially has a coronavirus and they cough or, you know, they're just talking regularly. And when you talk regularly, a lot of these small little droplets come out of your mouth. It's just, that's just the way it is. Or when someone sneezes, those droplets, they float with the wind and potentially could get on your face. Um, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's something I just don't want to risk, especially if you have, if you're like not at the end of the jetty, you have like an east wind and that wind is pushing all those spit droplets from all those fishermen to you. That's, that to me is kind of gross. Uh, and as I said, you know, I work at a hero hospital, meaning that we see the sickest of the sick with people that are affected with the coronavirus. And it's not pretty. It's not fun. And I don't want to get inf infected with this uh, virus. And I don't want my family to get infected. So that's why I haven't been fishing a jetty. St. Louis Pass, man, that's, that's an area I do want to... I want to go, but it's just the winds, man. The winds have been, golly, the winds have been crazy. Um, I, I remember last year this time, San Luis Pass was really good with um, speckled trout. So um, I'm going to try to hit up San Luis Pass as soon as the winds die down. Uh, the winds have been horrific. And as you guys know, I speak full time. So, or, or I work full time. So on the days that I'm off, are when it's like the windiest it's, it's crazy how that works out but um but yeah uh san louis pass is another area that can get pretty crowded um on the bay side uh with a lot of people wade fishing and bank fishing so it's it's been kind of like you know i'm dealing with the winds and i'm trying to see if it, it's, it's is it worth risking going out and being you know with all those people because you know, wade fishermen fish and bank fishermen are kind of the same. If they see you catching a lot of fish, they kind of get closer and closer. I mean, it's just, that's just bank fishing and wade fishing uh, culture mentality. And that's just the way it is. So uh, even kayakers and boaters, man, when they see people catching fish, people slowly start coming closer. So it's just, <laughs> just the way it is. So let's see here. Yeah, flounder poaching, um, that's another good po point, man. There's, man, people that poach, man, they're low lives. I mean, they have no respect, no respect um, for our habitat. It's, it's pretty sad. Oh, Slick Rick, you're under quarantine, man. I hope you feel better, man. I uh, hope everything goes well with you. Take care of yourself, man. Stay hydrated. Take care of your fever. If you have a fever, make sure you take care of your fever with Tylenol or ibuprofen. If you don't have a heart condition, you should be all right. Galveston Causeway at night. That's another area that's good this time of year. Um, it's just, man, when I want to go fishing, guys, it's, I don't know about you, but the, the winds have been a terrible, terrible thing, man. It's, it's, it sucks, man. Like uh, yesterday I went out and I got blown around in the marsh. I mean, it was extremely bad. 20 
five mile per hour gusts, I think 20 mile per hour sustain. Um, it sucked, man. I mean, the waves were, you're, I was completely soaked. Um, the waves were just bashing over me and it, it just sucked, man. Winds really suck. Will I go back to Moses Lake? Yeah, I would like to go back to Moses Lake. Um, that was a good area, especially when the gates were closed. The water was really low and you saw, I saw like four or five reds in the shallow. I mean, the, it was clear as day, they were right there. I just, they just didn't want to eat any of the bugs I had. So yeah, Moses Lake was a good day that day. Is there any surf, is the surf any good right now? Right now it's a good time to surf fish uh, with live croakers, the small little croakers. Um, it, it's gonna start ramping up towards the summer. Um, but the winds, man, I mean, it's always the wind, the winds just, if you're, if you're in a surf and you're fishing with like one and a half feet of swells, that sucks, man. If you're like, think about it, if you're in chest deep water, like in the first or second gut and you have a one and a half foot wave come, it's going to go over your head unless you're jumping. And that, that can get annoying because it's very frequent. Um, it sucks, man. I mean, especially when I'm filming. I have all this electronic equipment, like my batteries and my camera, my mic, and if you know a wave breaks over me and gets all that stuff uh, wet, it, it sucks, man. Um, but I do want to do some surf fishing uh, when the time is appropriate, when the winds got to be low and there got to be no swells. I mean, when the when the surf is flat, that's when I'm going to do surf fishing, and I might just do it from a kayak too, because um, I don't want to take a kayak in the surf while you have one and a half to two foot swells. That, that sucks, man. All right. Yeah, Slick Rick says, seems like more and more launch sites are getting shut down due to trash. Uh, that's what I heard too. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know specifically what launch spots have closed down, um, but I've heard a couple in Brazoria have closed down. Uh, the Texas City Skyline Beach Drive has pretty much you can't, you can't park there anymore, anywhere, and fish. Um, is that true, guys? Let, let me know. Is that true? Um, if that's the case, that sucks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. That's just the nature of the beast, I guess. I mean, any everything you can do, you pick up trash when you're there or tell people not to trash. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you do it, but yet people still do it. I mean, it's just, it's just sad, you know, them trashing the place. I mean, that's just the way it is, man. It just, it sucks. It, it's just, that's just, some people just want to throw their trash everywhere. Beto, thank you, man. Thanks, thanks for all the kind words. Texas City Dyke is open again. Uh, that's what I hear, right? Uh, is it closed? Is Texas City Dyke open on the weekend still? I heard they closed, but maybe they're open. I'm not sure. What do I do uh, if I encounter an alligator when kayaking? <laughs> I try to avoid it. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's, it's. I don't like gators, man. I did, um, when I was in Brazoria, uh, maybe a couple weeks back, I did see probably the biggest gator I've ever seen on the Texas coast kayaking. This thing, I was 150 yards out and I was going towards the South shoreline. Um, and God, I saw this, this mat, I mean, from 150 yards out, when you can see how big he is from 150 yards out, you know that's a big dude. This guy had to be minimum 10 feet long. I mean, he was massive. I mean, that, gosh, like, okay, 150 yards out, right? 150 yards out. His, 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 you know, his eyes and snout look this big from 150 yards out. So if you're looking at something like this from 150 yards out, you know, man, that's, that's, that's a big dude. And uh, yeah, I, I avoided him. I just don't like gators. Okay, seen yesterday another spot near 8 Mile is being blocked off. Oh, that sucks. Well, I mean, you know, 8 Mile is a it's a residential area too. So I, I assume a lot of these, I mean, yeah, probably trash and traffic has a lot to do with, you know, the residents wanting to close that area. So, I mean, I'm not too surprised. 
Elton asked, do you still have the Ultan iPod? I haven't seen you in a while. Well, Elton, I'm glad you asked that question. Check out my newest video I released yesterday and it answers all your questions right there. So the Surfside Jetty has limited uses. I don't know, man. I haven't been to the Surfside Jetty within three weeks, man. I really don't know. I mean, honestly, they should limit the number of fishermen there just because of the virus, but I don't know. I really don't know. Can I do more videos of kayak launch location? I might. I may. Uh, just stay tuned. All right, man. So, uh, yeah, we've been going strong for 35 minutes. I kind of just wanted to start this um, this live stream, just talking about the flounder flounder limits and the regulations. I think um, once again, it's it sucks, man. If they close down the November 5th, November 1st through December 15th flounder season run, it's it's unfortunate if they do that. It's going to hurt a lot of anglers out there. It's going to hurt. Gosh, it's going to hurt businesses. Um, in order to, con in my opinion, in my humble opinion, in order to control the population and help sustain that flounder population is to limit the bag limit from five to like two and move in the minimum size from 14 to 15. Uh, I think that will definitely help out a lot. Uh, but closing down the freaking November 1st to December 15th flounder one, that, that would suck. Um, I would think just incorporating those rules from the minimum size, maybe maybe moving the minimum size up from November 1st to December you know, 15th to maybe 17 inches uh, minimum, I think that would help. And keeping the limit at two, or possibly even one. I mean, a lot of, guys, a lot of you guys might disagree because you drive so far to go fish for flounder. I mean, it, catching one flounder, um, driving three, four hours, some of you guys, I, I know that, that, that would suck but looking in the long run to help the flounder population, I think that might be the best way to go. But closing it down completely, I think is unfair. But yeah, man, uh, anything else guys you wanna talk about real quick? Anything else you guys wanna talk about? <laughs> You want to know a good place to fish today, you're near Galveston. I, I don't know. Do you have a kayak? What, what are you fishing from? Bank? What do you want to wade fish? You got to be a little bit more specific. All right, guys. I think I'm going to cut it right there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we had almost 100 people uh, one time on this live stream. So uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, guys, you know, make sure you follow me on Instagram, rx underscore angler. Send me a personal DM through Instagram if you have a question. Um, anything, man. Um, Facebook, follow me on Facebook. Uh, it's Texas RX Angler. Uh, make sure you like that Facebook page. Uh, send me a message through there if you have a question. I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. But yeah, I think I'm going to cut it right here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.